Hello, my name is Dr. Erica Tinson, and I'm a veterinarian in emergency and critical care. Cardiopulmonary arrest, meaning the animal is unconscious and not breathing, is associated with low survival rates, as low as 4.1% in dogs and 9.6% in cats. The most effective method of correcting cardiopulmonary arrest is to perform cardiopulmonary resuscitation, or CPR. And I'm going to demonstrate to you today how to correctly perform CPR on a dog mannequin. Before starting CPR, it's important to check for airway breathing and circulation. You can recognize an animal in cardiopulmonary arrest by it being unconscious and not breathing at all. To check for breathing, look for the chest wall rising and falling. Try to wake the animal from its state. Emily, Emily. It's important that this process doesn't take any more than 10 to 15 seconds. It's unnecessary to check for a pulse as this is very insensitive and will delay CPR efforts which will negatively impact survival outcome. Before starting CPR, try to call for help. There are a few key components in performing CPR correctly. First, we'll look at animal and hand positioning. Lie the animal on its left or right side. For round-chested dogs like Labradors or mid to large breed dogs, perform compressions over the highest point of the chest. For keel-chested dogs, like boxers and Dobermans, or small dogs and cats, perform compressions directly over the point of the heart. You can locate the point of the heart by moving the elbow backward slightly to the point where it meets the chest. There are exceptions, and these are the flat-chested breed dogs, like the French Bulldogs. In these breeds, you'll need to roll the animal onto its back and perform compressions directly over the sternum. Secondly, we'll just look at the correct hand technique to be used during CPR. We use a double-handed technique whereby one hand is positioned over the top of the other hand. The shoulders are positioned directly over the hands and the elbows should be locked. When compressions are performed, you're bending at your waist rather than bending the elbows. So it should look a little bit like this. Thirdly, it's important that chest compressions occur at a rate of around 100 to 120 beats per minute. Chest compressions should also be quite hard in large breed dogs. The chest needs to be compressed by about one half to one third of the chest width. So it should look a little bit like this. It is important not to lean on the animal when performing CPR. So in between chest compressions, the chest needs to fully re-expand to maximize CPR effectiveness in moving blood around the body. Leaning on an animal when performing CPR might look like this, whereas we want it to be more like this. It's also important to allow CPR to run for at least two minutes uninterrupted and minimize pauses. In a lot of settings, intubation is not possible. In these situations, we need to provide mouth to snout ventilation. What we do is provide two breaths for every 30 compressions performed. To provide the breaths to the animal, make sure that the mouth is tightly closed so that any breaths delivered via the nostrils do not escape by the mouth. Try to keep the head and neck extended and straight as well so that any breaths delivered make it straight the way down to the thorax. So putting it all together, a correct CPR performed on a dog should look like this. After two minutes of uninterrupted CPR, very briefly pause for less than five seconds to check and see whether your animal is showing any signs of spontaneous breathing, any signs of consciousness, or whether you can feel a heartbeat. If the animal is still in cardiopulmonary arrest, recommence two minutes of uninterrupted CPR immediately. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you are now more confident in performing CPR on a dog.